Hello, I'm Beth Wagner. Welcome to Movement and Function. In today's video, I'm going to share information about when to apply cold therapy versus heat or warm therapy. I'll share with you the benefits of each and when you would choose to apply cold versus heat. Okay, the purpose of applying ice or cold therapy to our tissues is primarily for anti-inflammation. Now, inflammation is a normal, natural process in response to an injury. Our body brings in extra fluid, extra cells to try to repair and clean up an injury. While the inflammatory process is normal, oftentimes it can become exaggerated where there's too much fluid and it can become quite uncomfortable. Signs of inflammation include redness, warmth, swelling, and pain. Cold therapy decreases inflammation by narrowing the blood vessels and reducing blood flow. So this helps to decrease the amount of fluid and cellular material that flows into the area. It's also a natural pain reliever because it numbs the nerve endings. And by decreasing the fluid in the area, it decreases the pressure and that also helps to decrease pain. Now warm therapy or applying heat does the exact opposite. It increases blood flow by opening up blood vessels. It brings additional fluid into the area and helps improve overall blood flow. I recommend three specific times to use ice and three specific times to use heat. So as I go through these, I'll also go ahead and put a list up, up on the screen here. So you can take a screenshot and keep this for your own notes to reference later. The primary application of cold therapy is for an acute injury less than 72 hours old. So within those first three days of an acute injury, think of a sprain, a muscle strain, something like that. There is often significant swelling, redness, pain. And generally speaking, you don't want to apply warm therapy on an acute injury. It tends to make the inflammation worse. So use cold therapy for the first 72 hours after an injury. Number two under cold therapy is any time you see signs of inflammation. Again, that's redness, warmth, swelling, or severe pain. I would also add to that difficulty moving or using that body part. Number three is after any activity that increases signs of inflammation. So that could be after uh, participating in a sport or after a long walk or after any type of activity that you notice those signs of inflammation. All right, now moving on to heat. When do I apply a warm compress instead of the cold pack? Number one is when it's been more than 72 hours after injury and you've noticed the signs of inflammation have decreased. Number two is any time that your tissues feel stiff and achy and you notice difficulty moving that body part because of stiffness or limited range of motion. Number three is before activity in order to warm up your body before you initiate doing something active. This might be first thing in the morning on a cold morning or following any period of relative inactivity. So if we put those two lists in combination, there are some great ways to see how you can use cold and heat therapy in a complementary fashion. So following an acute injury for the first three days, apply cold therapy. After the signs of inflammation have faded, then go ahead and switch to warm therapy. On an ongoing basis, without any presence of injury, it's great to use warm therapy before activity and cold therapy to follow activity. You wanna warm up the tissue before you use it, and then you wanna help it cool down after use, especially overuse. Whether you choose ice or heat, 10 minutes of application is plenty. Remove the ice or the heat, let the area rest and return to room temperature for at least an hour, and then repeat as necessary. For both ice and heat, be sure that you do not apply directly onto the skin. Always be sure to have at least a thin layer of cloth in between the cold pack and your skin. Another great application of both cold and hot is to alternate. This is fantastic for increasing overall blood flow. Perhaps in an area with some chronic pain or that you've had a long healing time and it just doesn't quite feel fully normal yet. Maybe a little stiffness, sometimes some pain, or you just haven't restored full function in that area yet. When choosing to alternate heat with cold, you can choose how much time you want to apply both, anywhere from a couple of minutes up to 10 minutes. You can apply the heat first or the cold first. See what feels best for your body. Using alternating heat and cold is more of an art form. It's a great way to improve overall blood flow. 
Try starting with heat one time and then try start starting with cold the next time and see what feels better for you. Pay attention to those signs of inflammation and pay attention to what you feel in your body. Now I'll show you a couple of options for cold and heat. Cold packs come in a variety of forms and sizes. Commercial cold packs typically look like this. Some are smaller, some are larger. These can be stored in the freezer so that they're ready to go at a moment's notice. Now some commercial cold packs are also hot packs, so you can put them in the microwave to heat them up. If you're going to be using your pack for both cold and hot, then I recommend storing it at room temperature. Throw it in the freezer for an hour or so before use, and then when you're finished, leave it out. Before applying a cold pack, I recommend wrapping it in a pillowcase. So if you slip this in to the bottom of the pillowcase, just like so. What's great about this is you can apply just one layer of pillowcase onto the tissue, depending on where that tissue is, how bony it is, if you already have other fabric on that body part, or you can wrap the pillowcase over it. Now you have additional layers of cloth to further protect your skin. Now in terms of wrapping this, I've already posted a video all about applying an ice pack. I'll include that link in the description down below. Be sure to check that out. There's a ton of helpful information in there on rice, rest, ice, compression, and elevation to treat an acute injury. For this video, I'm going to keep this short and simple. A great way to wrap this around the body part is to simply wrap it all the way around and then use the loose end of your pillowcase to tuck it under. So whether it's an elbow or a knee or an ankle, you can use this loose end to pull, apply a little bit of compression, and then tuck it under. Set your timer for 10 minutes and you're good to go. Other applications of cold include commercial cryo cuffs, which is a fancy machine that uses cold water and a cuff to, to circulate cold water around an area. Those are very common following surgery. Another option is an ice massage. I've also posted a video all about performing an ice massage. I'll also include that link down below and check that out. Ice massage is fantastic for applying a quick, deep icing to a tissue that is more superficial. So it's great for things like elbows, the top of the knee, even the top of the shoulder or the wrist. It doesn't work as well on deep tissues but it's fantastic for those superficial, easy to reach body parts. And it only takes about three minutes instead of 10 minutes. So check out that video to learn more about applying ice massage. All right, now for heat. As I already mentioned, you can use a commercial hot pack that goes from both hot and cold. You can also use a warm compress, so a, a, a washcloth or a towel that you dip in hot water. Be careful not to burn yourself and then apply to the body part. A warm water soak is also really handy for things like hands and feet or body parts that you're able to soak in warm water readily. Another option for warm therapy is using some type of seed or corn husk um, wrapped in a cloth. So this was one that my friend made that is just cloth that she put seed into and then sewed the end. These are great to pop in the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds at a time. Every mi since every microwave is different, check yours to be sure that you don't burn the contents of the bag. These are very handy for small areas of application. Things like your eyes, the top of your head, even the side of your neck or a wrist, small areas. These work really great for that. Okay, I've included a lot of information in this video. I hope this is helpful for you to better understand and make great choices for when to apply heat and cold for your body. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm able. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Here's to your healing, health, and happiness. Have a fantastic day.